Warning, the following communications are not authorized. Please disable your signals and report to your local re-education center immediately. Failure to comply will result in immediate reprimand and capital punishment. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? How are you guys? Amazing. I have to tell her about the warning. She doesn't know about the YouTube warning. Oh yeah, Mitch. You gotta you gotta do the warning or else you get taken down. Oh Official God. YouTube rules. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's um, amazing. Did you lose your voice? I did. I did. I don't know where it went, but uh <laughs> I just been shouting too much. She's yelling at the TV during the impeachment. She just got off Newsmax, by the way. Oh nice. Where uh where can we find that? I was about to say. I'm guessing Newsmax. <laughs> Newsmax yes, I was on Newsmax tonight with uh, Grant Stinchfield. So that was really cool. So where oh, are we cool. starting tonight? What? Are, uh, I, and I, just I, before we just let me just say, she drove clear across the country. I drove halfway mm -hmm. across the country. So if you want to touch on that, we can do it. Go ahead. This is this is what we're about here. So well, where did you guys? Uh, what? What, Eric? No, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have to obviously we talk like impeachment to electric boogaloo. So if you want to start there, we can start there. We get, I just want to make sure we're not I don't want to do a bait and switch or anything. Okay, let's start with the impeachment then. A lot of great arguments I'm heard being made <laughs> for why Trump should be impeached. And we're gonna need another um another warning for that now, I think. You're not allowed to question the election on YouTube. No, um, I think they were the first to do that. Of yeah, course, okay, so but uh, I'm not allowed to question or report on it. Otherwise, it's going to get taken down. They invented it. You're right. So let's get into it. Um, Eric, you want to start with uh, your first impressions on this whole thing? Uh, to me, it's just a publicity stunt to try to really, you know, kick Trump out now that he's lost already. Um, just to try to make him feel bad because they're so butthurt about it and have been. Uh, what's your first thoughts on it? Well. Of course, it's pure political theater. Um, we were listening to it in the car a little bit. We were watching some of it, of course, on YouTube. And it, it's it's actually infuriating because it's not just about kicking this man while he's down. It's about sending a message to anybody else who will dare not capitulate to every single weirdo left wing talking point. And, and the problem is exacerbated, exacerbated, is made worse by the fact that we live through six, eight months of pure rioting from the left and the gaslighting and the hypocrisy is enough to drive anybody absolutely insane. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's pure political theater and it's, it's driving me crazy. Yeah, it's infuriating. I could tell, Midge, you must have been yelling all day. About <laughs> I've been yelling at the TV all day. I'm so mad about this impeachment. It's just a complete farce. I mean, honestly, it's such a sham from the Democrats. And it's, I mean, honestly, it's despicable. They're sitting there and they're doing what they, I mean, gaslighting is the exact perfect word because they are telling us that we are doing what the left have actually been doing to America for, you know, eight months this year. Minimum. So, yes. I mean, it was all summer. It was into the fall. We had people out there, you know, and the Democrats, uh, you know, we have prominent people who are out there supporting the rioters, bailing them out of jail. Uh, and encouraging the violence in the streets. And then, uh, yeah, they're sitting here and telling us that because Trump said we need to fight for our country, that he was somehow uh, invoking an insurrection and telling people to go to the Capitol and break in, which is completely false. Anyone that was watching the impeachment, that was watching those, those video highlights that were put together by uh, you know, a very talented filmmaker, but certainly it was not reality. They strategically cut out what President Trump said to make it appear as if he you know, was inciting this, he was asking his, his uh, you know, followers and supporters to go off and to storm the Capitol when they deliberately cut out parts of his speech, the same way they did with the Charlottesville lie, the same way they do with Trump all the time. Uh, and then they turn around and they say, you're the bad guy if you question what we're saying. You, know, you guys are the bad guys, you guys are the ones causing violence, you guys are the ones inciting the violence. Uh, you are the ones that need to denounce this. You have to be re-educated. You need to be re-educated. There's something wrong with you, right-wing Americans, you know, good conservatives. And uh, if you don't accept the outcome of this election, if you don't accept that Joe Biden was legitimately elected, 
uh, you know, you need to be sent to the re-education camp and, and the social media gulags as well. And we, we do remember, I don't, I want to make sure we remember that they, the Washington Post was writing about impeaching Donald Trump the day he was inaugurated. So clearly they have been searching for any reason under the sun to, I, I would say get rid of him, but they've already properly gotten, they've already gotten rid of him one way or another. And then, look, it, it's, it's incredibly triggering. And I, are you able to, can you pull up that Ted Lieu clip? Is that possible? Yeah, we can pull up the Ted Lieu clip. I just wanted to mention, um, Midge just touched on it. What I was going to mention was um, Fleck has talked, showed Austin's uber nice guy, reposted his um, video from the first impeachment, uh, I think last night. And I was going to mention it. This is playing out exactly like the Charlottesville clip, which is what a lot of people he interviewed mentioned. Uh, same speech. He says he disavows all, all the wonderful people there. Um, not the non actual people are going to take that seriously that he disavowed the white supremacists and everything there. And now they're doing the same thing as if he didn't say do it peacefully. I mean, like people are going to take things into their own hands anyways. But how can Nancy you Pelosi some- said that? Remember? Remember when Pelosi said that? Sorry, I'm just turned up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to do what they want anyways. It's the same thing where they try to blame, like, I don't know, Justin Bieber fans for doing stuff. And even when the guy says do something peacefully and patriotically, they still take it uh, the wrong way on purpose. And that's really sad. So let's see if we can get to this clip here. Because this is where he's... He again does not acknowledge his role in... the insurrection it's cutting out he's What's he's he's talk, he's cutting out it's uh all right it's, it's well, a, it's we a can working this up. basically this was outrageous what ted lu said today ted lu said the quiet part out loud he said the part they're all thinking but that they have not come out and said and basically what ted lu says in this clip and i hope we can we can get it up or, or people should go check it out But basically what he said is that, uh, you know, the reason that we have all of this military presence in Washington, D.C. is because President Trump has not said that Joe Biden won the election. It was not stolen. (laughs) And, And basically they want Trump to say those words. They want Trump to say the election was not stolen. That's what they want. And they think that if they can sort of force Trump to say that, then this will all this will all be okay, and so yeah, I mean, the, and then he even admits that's the reason for all of this uh, military presence. Yeah, I mean, did I forget anything? No, no, that's it. And we again that on top of the last eight months of hypocrisy and and look, we can now they're putting these um, these missing context notices when people mention Maxine Waters quote. When people mention Ayanna Presley and uh, Nancy Pelosi, and there was one more that I'm forgetting. Um, was it Kamala guy, Harris? Kamala Harris. When, what about guys who kick them when they're down? That's another. That's another they're one older. too. There you they're, go. Yeah. So, yeah. so all that we just ignore. Yeah. And Let's try to play it again in another way. Meme, right? Oh, you want to? Yeah, they're they're fact checking the meme now. Yeah, they're fact checking the meme. He again does not acknowledge his role in the insurrection. He does not say in that video, for example, everything I said in the months prior went too far. And he does not say the one sentence that matters. He does not say the one sentence that would stop future political violence. The election was not stolen. Oh, actually, I actually have another point about he this. He still hasn't said that sentence. That is why National Guard troops in full body armor still patrol outside so what a i can't stand that guy remember when he lied outside of the last impeachment um him and uh who's who's bug guys there um you know exactly the crazy eyes about. you know exactly what i'm talking about they do the impression of him on uh on fox oh, shit. When it, yeah, greasy Adam Schiff, shifty Schiff. When they're they're standing outside there and they're just lying every single day, and I and I see on Twitter people saying, "Oh, God bless Adam Schiff and Ted Lou. They're fighting for what's right." No, they get these guys like Schiff, Lou, and um, uh, I, I'm forgetting all the names. Chinese spy, 
Swalwell. Eric Swalwell. They get these guys who are the gre all the greasiest guys to come out because they're the only ones who are willing to to throw their reputation in the dirt for this. Why? I don't know. But they get all the worst people out to come out. And, and then maybe it's bots. Maybe it's people who are very lost. Like, God bless these people. They're doing what's right. And Adam Schiff's face is melting while he's on TV. And I don't understand how anybody can believe these guys. And can I, I want to mention one more thing about the Ted Lieu clip is how can he be so sure that Donald Trump saying one sentence is going to end political violence? Is that to oh. say, I mean, is that like, first of all, there was one incident at the Capitol where some people were angry about what they have been, what, what they've seen going on. And they targeted one specific building for better or for worse. But for him to say that, if he says one sentence, that's going to end political violence, which A, that's obviously not true. B, how could you even pretend to know that for a fact? Right. I mean, that almost leads me to believe that you may be behind some of your own political violence because you know that certain people will listen to certain things that the Democrats say. Right. So it's that guilty conscience yeah, thing. It's like, yeah. So, yes, this guy's absolutely awful. And I mean, I'm pretty much impeachmented out so we can move on if you're ready to move <laughs> electric on, boogaloo yeah i mean come on We're just just to recap briefly right on the day donald trump was inaugurated the washington compost wrote an article about the case to impeach donald trump the day he was inaugurated they wanted to do it when he came down this down the escalator and then we talked about russia for three years we pivoted on a dime went to Ukraine, impeached him on a phone call. That didn't work. And now they're doing it because of a speech that he gave in the week before he was leaving office. And nobody, well, obviously some people can tell that it's complete nonsense, but how does anybody with the, you know, anybody even high school age should be able to say, wait, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, he's out of office, but it's really about, you know, it's all about get drunk. And I, I, you have to imagine, is this guy such a big threat to the Democrats that they want to ensure that he can never run for or hold political office ever again? Is that what's really driving this? And it seems like it is. Yeah, they know something that we don't know, and they've been throwing things at the wall for the past four years. Is it true that if they people say this, if they impeach him again, he can't run again? Is that what's going? Is that the reality? So, you probably know more about that than me. That's what, yeah, that's that's my understanding. I think he's going to lose certain, uh, I, I don't know, I guess he's going to lose certain benefits, but also he wouldn't be able to run again in 2024. Or have but, Secret Service. Yeah, mm. I don't know if that's 100% okay. true, but I have heard that, but I'm, I'm not certain it's true. But yeah, apparently he wouldn't be able to hold political office. I'd like to point out that Hillary Clinton never conceded. Uh, Jill Stein helped her not concede. And Stacey I, Abrams, um, probably Eric's favorite Democrat. <laughs> Also, she still thinks she's the governor. Uh, yeah, super and, and speaking, it's funny that you bring up Stacey Abrams because I got an, an email. I went to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas many years ago, and I'm still on their email list. And she's a keynote speaker at a music festival, which I just of course. thought was weird. Um, exactly why Tom but, Hanks is a keynote speaker at the DNC <laughs> or at the and, inauguration. Why? Um, no, I am no fan of Hillary Clinton, but I was under the impression she did concede. Neither um. Neither. Go ahead uh, and what? Me. At what time? At what date was that? Uh, I, I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that's up to the fact checker. My hat. Anyways. Um, and okay. somebody. Yeah. Right. What do you think? And somebody DM'd me. Said, "Where's Midge's famous mic?" So. People. Oh, the little fuzzy one. Do you have? A <laughs> it's been retired. Yeah. Sadly, it got retired. But now I've moved on in the world. Now I've got a new mic for the street. But yeah, so that's I, a, I need to bring that back with the spoon. I got an idea from Fleckis. The and then James mic. Klug was using the back scratcher mic. So you guys started a whole thing. And shout out to the OG fans. Wow. Yeah. Just like don't use like a don't use a steak knife or anything. That would send the wrong message. <laughs> <laughs> What's the CDC found about wearing two masks, you guys? That's what we really wanted to know here. So um, two masks <laughs> is the new big thing that we've been seeing. Fit matters when it comes to your mask protecting you against the virus that causes COVID-19. A layering, a well-fitting cloth mask or a surgical mask is likely to prove beneficial, according to new findings released Wednesday by the CDC. 
Um, so this is stuff that we've obviously already know. They want you to have a firm fitting masks. But why are we coming out with this information on mass a year later? Everybody already knew that the reason why masks mostly, thank God we have the warning. See, this is why. <laughs> if you did, like the mask, not only does it not filter it out, but there's holes up here, there's holes around here. You can tell when your people are smoking cigarettes. You can tell what, if you're wearing glasses and they fog up. It doesn't make any sense. Why are they pushing it all now, Eric? It might sound like a rhetorical question, but go ahead and answer that for us. Well, I have no idea why they're pushing it now. Well, they basically they want to dehumanize us. I don't know which way to go, but they want to dehumanize us. They want us all completely um, faceless and nameless. But more importantly, I think what this does is prove that masks don't work, right? Because for the better part of a year, we were told to wear a mask. And that whole year goes by, and now they say, oh, wear another one. So does that mean the first one didn't work at all? And if it didn't, why are we doing it again? It's the same thing with the lockdowns, right? Like, why would you go into a second lockdown? Because if the lockdowns worked, you wouldn't need a second lockdown. And if the lockdowns didn't work, you wouldn't need a second lockdown. So I don't know what they're doing. Um, I, we both thought that it would be over when Biden won, but clearly they're doubling down because now they have complete control. Um, I think we should go to, for three masks. I mean, <laughs> if, it's if, there. It's if there. exactly the yeah. a journalist was, was writing about the double mask. It's not the, uh, it's not the same one as this ABC article, but, it, but, um, I said, why not three masks? Why not a whole hazmat suit? If you actually, well, I was in the army when we got, uh, they testing for a CS gas, like tear gas. We didn't just wear a mask and a face shield. It doesn't work that way. You have to go. If you want to be actually consistent. You have to go full CBRN, chemical, bio, radioactive, nuclear suit, or else I'm sorry to tell you that microscopic things are going to get into you. And, and we're talking about, again, we're still talking about a thing that's over 99%, 99.5% survival rate. Mm -hmm. it, it's just that's maddening. Right. And this is what you guys are talking about, Midge, with the uh, with the gaslighting. It, it never seems to end. And, and these journalists, they just go right along with it. They think... Either they think they're being great people, or they're just along for the ride, and and somebody's being like, let's 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 push this through, and somebody picks it up, like the journalists who are in the Podesta emails, who just agreed to do everything that they were told. But so, it also, is it weird that we finally get this super safe and effective vaccine, and rather than say, oh, we're saved, they say, no, we're two now. Yeah. Right. We ju we ju we're just talking about the vaccine. And instead of saying, all right, let's take our foot off the gas a little bit. They double down. I mean, if that is not a sign to you it's that about, it's about control or humiliation. Right. It, and sometimes I, I have to imagine like when I see these stories come out, like the story that came out of China, that now they're doing uh, anal swab testing for to test more accurately for COVID-19. I have to say to myself, are, we, are they just messing with us at this point? Yeah. Are they just testing us to see how stupid are people? Like, is China testing us to say like, wow, how stupid are these Americans? Are they gonna buy the story? Are they gonna run the story? Are they gonna stick stuff up their butt if we put up this piece of propaganda? Uh, you know, at what point are, are does this end? Is it just gonna continually get more and more absurd? I've never heard of a, of a test that you have to stick a swab all the way up into your brain to see if you have it, that you can't swab the inside of someone's cheek, but it's so deadly that we have to wear two or three masks or a hazmat suit or whatever. I mean, this is absurd. So I feel like common sense would tell you that uh, I, th th this is all nonsense. I mean, and we even hear and see these videos of people talking about political theater and putting on their masks to go on TV and then taking it off when they're walking mm -hmm. around. I mean, people know that it's absurd. Uh, and, and it's sad, though, that they've got a lot of people out there brainwashed and scared of their fellow man uh, just to go out and live their lives. So, I, I mean, I, I don't know. When does it end? People need to just wake up yeah. and take off the mask and just go back to living their lives. Will it see, ever this sort of, I don't think so. see, this sort of makes it sound like it's, it is a 
let's see how far we can take it thing. Anal testing. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this. Is being used <laughs> so far only in select groups, mainly high risk cases and people in quarantine. So that could be that could be completely fake. Some people have been subjected to anal testing include passengers arriving in Beijing and a group of more than 1000 school children. Wait, wait, so you're telling me the people that are the most susceptible need the anal probe test that, that we're going to put, do this to, to elderly people. I mean, this is really, this is violating. Like if I found out that my grandmother was in a home, uh, in a nursing home, had to have an anal swab put up her for to test her for COVID. I mean, that's a violation. I mean, this, this seems like really just just too much, right? Like, I I don't know. I don't know why. And like, though, why, why do you have to do that to people? But and they say that it's more accurate, right? Yeah. So, what have we been doing the whole time, right? It says it, here that um, it lives longer in excrement or the anus. So. It's a more accurate way of testing, Eric. <laughs> okay. And I don't want to make weird connect. I do want to make weird connections, but is it funny do. that New York has now uh, recently, and, and please go ahead and fact check me on this, but basically legalized prostitution. So we're all very still scared of the virus. They're just coming off lockdown almost a full year later. They're doing, they're talking about anal swabs that are more accurate but they're also legalizing prostitution and, and we won't even get into the border nonsense about what don't ask questions. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it's, it, I think the finish the wall. Um, so my, my question is if it's now more accurate, then doesn't that mean they've been lying to us the whole time? Same thing with the mask. Now you have to wear two masks, which let, lets us know that one didn't work. So now it's more accurate. That's like when you see something on, on the, on the shelf, it's like, new, better taste. And it's like, well, what were you guys doing before? You know what I mean? It's like, what, what was really happening before? Um, and well, to play well, anal swab advocate, it says we propose anal swabs as the potentially optimal specimen for SARS cov 2 detection for evaluation of hospital discharge of COVID-19 patients. These are scientists from Wuhan university. <laughs> They are messing with this. This is Chinese propaganda. Okay, we got another. We got another super chat. Scientists in Wuhan, you cannot. I'm sorry. Q said, "Hold on a minute. We've got some input." Q said, "The awakening won't be televised, but we had Trump on TV for four years. What's wrong? Who's wrong? Keep trusting that plan, baby. Keep trusting it. That's what I say." It has are no, people awake? Are people awake? Midge, I, I want to know what Mid Midge is supreme q thoughts are can we okay. get a definitive well, statement look um just i want to i want to tell people i i was never on board with the q but i also was not a um a, you know a i wasn't a naysayer i wasn't a hater i was like yeah, i feel like there's some stuff to it certain there's there's something there i wouldn't put all my faith in it but i'm now convinced i'm now i was saying like 98 percent convinced that it's that it's a side I think that this is like controlled opposition. Keep all the all of the Trump people, all the patriots, nice and complacent. Just trust the plan. Sit back. We got this. Just wait. And it's always a just wait and see. And it's a way of keeping people from actually organizing and getting out there and um, you know taking action in their communities and, and getting together as groups. Because you've got a way of just letting everyone know it's going to be okay. Trust the plan. Mm -hmm. Sit back. So I don't know. I'm. Um, I don't mean to be like a hater, but I just. That's a good point. But now, are people awake? Are people awake? I mean, is have, have people? I, okay, yes, of course. Some people have come to come to like uh, be a little bit more politically aware. And I will say, I'm. It does give me a tiny bit of hope when you look at some of these crazy stories on Instagram or some, you know, these uh, ABC news posts, and you go into the comments and you see some of the people who are laughing it up and having, you know, making the plastic bag jokes and, and calling out the corruption. Now, obviously, the pe maybe people who are angry about it are a little more vocal, like you're more likely to leave an angry Yelp review than a good Yelp review type of thing. But I don't know, I, I don't have too much about uh, on cue for, but thanks for the super chat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, the next thing I wanted to get to was 
um, around the vaccine. Now, there's a guy here in Canada who's been a speaker at the big protests. He's got about 90,000 followers on Instagram. His name is Chris Sky. And he told me there's a, a video of me and him on Twitter that's gotten a million views uh, to toot my own horn here. And it's him predicting the lockdown procedure that's going to happen. He says there's going to be a lockdown for the summer. They're going to lift it a bit and they're going to come back with another lockdown for the second wave. They're going to say that's not going to work. And he was right about all that. And then I said, Chris, give me your next big prediction. And he said, in a couple of months, they're going to say the vaccine is not enough. You have to get the vaccine every year. And I was starting to be like, oh, he was wrong about that one. Until this week, Johnson and Johnson said, this vaccine is going to be annual, you guys. And I guess that's sort of predictable, you guys, because giant CEO from big company says buy my product more. Is that really that surprising, you guys? Um, Absolutely not. Well, look, I kind of knew that this whole thing was bogus when they said that you were your antibodies only lasted for four months and that Trump could get it again or that some people could get it this more than once. I've never heard of a virus in my entire life that you get the exact same virus more than once. Like, I, I don't know. I've never heard of this. Like, you get chickenpox once, you get things once, and then you're immune. You develop the antibodies there in your body. And that's the idea with the vaccine, right? Um, I can understand it with like a flu shot because there's a different strain of the flu each year. But isn't that basically what this is? COVID 19, the boogeyman, is basically the new version <laughs> of the flu. And it's just going to keep evolving and it's going to be with us forever. And now they want to force you to get a new vaccine for this every single year. Um, but this is really what I've been warning against. I feel like I've been screaming from the rafters, like medical tyranny is coming. And this is what we're going to face is that we're getting into this situation now where they want to, they, they can't necessarily force you to take the vaccine, but they can prevent you from going into normal American life. And they, they, they've already started doing this in California. Kids in California have to get all these vaccines in order to go to school. And now they've said that uh, if you work at or attend any of the UCs in California, any of the state schools, you are required to get a flu vaccine. So next thing you know, they're probably gonna require you to get a COVID vaccine. Then you're gonna have to get the flu vaccine next year. And what's shameful is there are people out there who have allergies to vaccines, who have had adverse reactions to vaccines, people who had been working at the University of California for many, many years, and all of a sudden they are forced to have to quit their job because they are not willing to take a vaccine that could make them very, very sick. So I just have to wonder, like, where does it end? And at what point do we have a right to say, no, I'm not going to put this medicine in my body? Uh, you know, I, I, I started out last year, I was not anti-vax by any means. But it's very frightening, and I do not want to live under a government that tells me what medication I am required to take, that I am required to put in my body. Um, it, it's just, it's wrong, and you have to wonder, like, where is your freedom? Also, well, what a lot of people think, sorry, Eric, but what a lot of people seem to think that's happening, at least up here, is that with all the tickets being given out, I don't know what it's like where you guys live, but everything's a ticket. Um, gathering outside was a ticket too many people in your house ticket uh <laughs> opening your restaurant ticket most people think that they can't actually enforce these things most people seem to think at least the most people that are against this um seem to think that the strategy here is hand out these tickets dole them out a lot of people will pay them um, and they're not going to get to court for two years. So what's what difference does it make? Because once the courts reopen right here, they're online only. They're Zoom courts and they're super backlogged. So whenever this is all over, they have to get to the, the real lawsuits, the real court charges. And then they're going to have what? A couple thousand um, ticket cases. I would hope at least in America, it's probably going to be hundreds of thousands. But then they're either going to settle them and say, oh, it wasn't actually uh, overriding your your freedoms, or let's just throw them out because it's been too long and we can't uh, clog up the court system. That seems to be what is most likely to most people. And what I tend to lean towards is we can get people to, to go along with these orders that don't actually have bearing in face of the Constitution. Nothing can override that in my country or yours. So let's just get people to comply as much as they can. And when push comes to shove and we actually have to 
address these things, we could just throw them out because people did what we wanted them to do for two years anyways. Do you guys get that feeling? Or do you, do you think there's there's a, another way that the government can actually end up forcing this? I don't know if they're how they're going to... Well, there's a handful of ways they could enforce it or force, force it on people. But I just want to say that this is not surprising to me at all. I mean, look at the chain of events, right? What was it, a week or so ago we had Fauci saying that, remember, okay, first of all, he moved the goalposts on herd immunity. It was 60%, then it was 75, then it was 85 or 90 or whatever it is. Yeah, so yeah, now it's 90. So they're continuing to inch up and then he goes out and says, well, now by, by spring, by summer, we need to have the kids vaccinated. So, and, and, and Andrew Cuomo, which really triggers me, your favorite guy, um, my favorite person on the planet, saying that um, that the, the the poor communities of color, the black and Latinos of New York just need to get over it. So that to me signals. And so all of all of those things happen before Johnson and Johnson said that it's going to be annual. So to me, it was just a gradual progression and they're going to milk it. I mean, right. Like it's it's a money play. Like and, and I ask myself this all the time. Is it money? Is it? power is it just like what is it really in right now today i'm thinking it's money because with the 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 progression that's happened it of course it culminates and you have to get this every single year it doesn't really work they told you it doesn't really work you still got to wear a mask in fact you got to wear two you can't travel <laughs> you still got a social distance you still got to get tested and you have to get the vaccine every year it's at, at this point it sounds like a money play but i could be wrong yeah do you guys remember when they when people were going through the CDC site and they said there was only I think it was six percent? Why do of, we look like this? Is what are people seeing right now? We're looking kind of weird. They're yeah. seeing us split in half. Oh, what? We, on our end, we just see little boxes. That looks weird. I don't know. Don't worry, you guys. I can see. I can see the actual feed. Right, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I should I shouldn't have even. Yeah, little box. On our end. My bad. I should, well, anyways. Move on. Continue. I'm sorry. But Andrew, so, I have to say, I have to say though, and I want to know what sort of the feeling is up where you are. But like, to me, I feel, and I kind of see this happening, that they're going to force us to get the vaccine, not by literal force, like every single person has to pay their taxes, every single person has to take a vaccine, but they're going to do it by bullying the industries and mm -hmm. bullying the schools and bullying the workplaces. And so slowly but surely, you're not really gonna be able to have a life. You're not gonna be able to travel without getting a vaccine. You're not gonna be able to go to school without getting a vaccine. You're not gonna be able to go to your corporate job without a vaccine yep. or work in the, in the public sector. All of these things are gonna be um, removed from you. So yeah, you might be able to live uh, without taking the vaccine, but you're not really gonna be able to live a normal life. And where does it end, right? We've already seen Conservatives being deplatformed, conservatives being, uh, you know, taken off of like banking sites or being spied on, not able to use social media. So I feel like it's only a very short step to go from where we are now to, you know, basically imposing vaccines on people through through these private enterprises. I mean, what do you think? Is this is this something you see happening? Well, can I just say really quick that it's already happening with the travel? What we saw news yesterday or today? Oh, Biden's considering. Place. Was he? He's like sanctioning Florida now. What is he yeah. talking about? Yeah. Like so. So obviously that is one step in that direction. But yeah. Well, it. Israel announced that they're going to cut off some some rights to people um, if they don't get the vaccine. I believe it was a uh, things like concerts and restaurants. Now, as far as in on our side of the planet, I did a video a couple of months ago where um, Ticketmaster was trying to do this thing where they wanted to pair with IBM. What a surprise, Bill Gates, you guys. Uh, <laughs> Um, they wanted to pair with IBM. So IBM gets your medical information from whoever gives you your vaccine and IBM gives it to the concert venue through Ticketmaster and nobody actually has access to your information, you guys. Don't worry. And that, then they walk that back. Now what happened here, actually, our uh, premier, um, who is the equivalent to your governor of Ontario, his chief um, health official, whatever you want to call her, is Christine Elliott. She said that that's what's going to happen is that um, you're, you're going to lose some of your ability to maybe go to certain places, do certain things. She said that she wanted that. and But then a couple months later, our prime minister actually said that he doesn't think that's going to happen. So um, he's obviously the one 
uh, feeding the information to people. So I'm thinking that either they tried that and they're like, people aren't really going to do that or they're going to try it again in a few months. Um, so, but whether that happens or not, that seems that's an obvious ploy that maybe they put that out. People put that out there as a feeler, but I think that might be a little bit too obvious. Um, but it is a way because I get emails all the time. Um, I work for a construction company. They want us to get COVID, uh, testing. <laughs> no, they want us to get the, the virus. <laughs> no, they, they want us to get COVID testing. Um, I'm a teacher. They want us to get COVID testing all the time. Uh, people's apartment buildings up here. You can't, you can't go in your own lobby without wearing a mask. So all the, and Costco and, um, um, another, another place I can't remember right now, but Costco, I think it was good life fitness doesn't want people to come in there. Um, unless they're not on any exemptions is my point. So what I think is happening is they're relying on businesses and like you said, Mitch pressure from other people to just go along with this because what, what's the best people can do. What I tell them is unfortunately you're either going to have to call the cops and make them enforce the bylaws, which say there are exemptions or you're going to have to go through this stupid process of a human rights tribunal is what we have in Canada where a bunch of people who aren't elected get to decide if your complaint, but your human rights is valid. So um, what I say to people when they just say, Oh, what's wrong? You just, you just wear the mask. It's not that hard, which is something you see in a lot of the comments, um, for culture pages in Toronto. And I say, well, you got this guy, this kid at Walmart, who's maybe 20 years old. And he's, he's thinking, Oh, uh, we don't honor exemptions legally. That's the same thing as saying, sir, get out of your wheelchair, ma'am. You don't need that eye seeing dog. We can't leave it up to pay, um, employees who are working minimum wage, maybe restaurateurs or greeters at Walmart, we can't leave it up to them to decide who has human rights violations and who is actually following their own medical advice from their doctor. We can't have people deciding that because then you're going to have Billy at Walmart getting sued for $100,000 because he violated somebody's human rights. And at least here, he the person... Get sued. Exactly. The person here who's <laughs> just lis listening to what their employer says, they get in, they get sued too. You can't just be like, I was the one uh, being told by my employer. The person who actually enforces it is also liable, um, at least where I live. So what I was originally getting at was there's this study um, from the CDC, um, based on the CDC's own stats that just came out yesterday that says that they inflated the numbers by 1,600%. And this is where it goes back to um, people who were going to the CDC and saying that um, on their own charts, you can't, uh, you can tell that there's only like 6% positive rate. So what this study did is they took, um, they took that into consideration and along with the PCR tests, not being, <laughs> not being very good at all as said, as what was said by the guy who invented them. And they're saying it was, inflated by 1600%. And I'll read just a, a bit of this and get your guys' reaction. 1600, okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, let's see. Among the notable findings in the study is the conclusion that the CDC illegally enacted rules, new rules for data collection and reporting exclusively for COVID-19 that resulted in 1600% inflation of fatality totals. So what they talk about in this is that the CDC actually pushed out um, new rules for for calculating uh, fatalities. And what they did is they told doctors, let me see if I can find that on here. Um, yes, COVID-19 was to be listed in part one of death certificates as a definitive cause of death, regardless of confirmatory evidence, rather than in part two as a contributor to death in the presence of pre-existing conditions. On its website, here's what I was talking about. CDC says just 6% of the count of people counted as COVID-19 deaths died of COVID-19 alone. So they instructed, they put out an alert here and I'll, and I'll end there. CDC published an alert instructing medical examiners, coroners, and physicians to de-emphasize underlying causes of death, also known as pre-existing conditions and comorbidities. So basically they put, they, they told um, these examiners, coroners, and physicians, don't worry about if there's a, another cause of death, if there's pre-existing conditions or comor comorbidities, actually just put COVID as the number one thing, which is another one of those things that people were being accused of being conspiracy theorists about. And, and it turns out the, CB, the CDC was actually the one behind it, not individual hospitals.
So, first of all, they said that's illegal. Now, apparently it looks like the CDC has been writing policy, though, right? I mean... Their own policy. But, okay, now it's federal. At least here, it's like a federal mandate that you have to wear a mask on, on public transportation. But I feel like that was prompted by the CDC. I, I don't have it pulled up, but I think... Oh, it was, I see what you're saying. CDC was supposed... Okay, these people are completely crooked. Um, at this point, they don't seem any different than the World Health Organization, as far as I'm concerned. They seem to be like just another puppet of China. I mean, they've been flip-flopping around the whole time. Uh, we remember the, I remember when the 6% meme was floating around a couple of months back and, and that was getting fact-checked. You couldn't even use the percent sign at one point because <laughs> they were telling you that, the, well, that, that's missing context and all sorts of things. Um, but this is obviously a way to retain power. It's but also, and it's also just so alarming though, because we've been gaslit for the whole past year. And mm -hmm. anyone who questioned anything at all related to COVID, you were, uh, you know, heckled, you were mocked, you were, you were sent, censored, you were sent, you were anti science. Oh, just believe the science. But meanwhile, it's like, but what if the science is incorrect? What if the science or the methodology of, of collecting the science is misleading or missing context, right? But all of a sudden, we were called. I had my videos removed. I was censored. I was demonetized for posting videos on Facebook, sort of addressing some of these issues about COVID. And you know, it's it's insane because now they're trying to uh, you know backpedal or readjust for things, and people are realizing, okay, maybe this wasn't as bad as we thought. But there's there's sort of no, I don't I don't know. There's like, how do we correct for this? Because the misinformation is already out there. Well, this is another part of it, which was um, talking about the legalities is um, they're in violation. This is what's alleged. It's on WND. It's um, they're just reporting it. There's an actual um, link to the study They're in CDC is in violation of federal law by outsourcing data collection rule development to the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists, a nonprofit entity, again, without applying for oversight and an opening opportunity for public scientific review. So they're supposed to apply for some sort of oversight, which makes it so that other scientists can can review it. And they purp it looks to me, just by reading it, I'm not a lawyer, but that they purposely put it to a certain nonprofit entity so they can probably get the answers that they want. It's like when you put a study, um, you commission a study, so that you can get talking points from it. But so they've broken the rule, they've broken the law, and we're still supposed to just follow them blindly. I don't understand this, right? I mean, shouldn't that disqualify you? I don't. And also, all of a sudden, science is arbitrary. Science is defined <laughs> by what outcome do you want, and we're just going to kind of make it up because this is the, this is the result we want. So now this is science. But it's insane to me that it's it's become a religion to these people. You cannot question the science. Um, but honestly, it just, it's, it's, it's very forced and phony at this point. So of course people aren't going to trust a vaccine, an experimental vaccine that they were told that they have to take. And it's now though, science. now though, that anybody who had been questioning this stuff was cast, you know, cast off onto an island and, and censored and, and deplatformed and all sorts of things. And slowly, but surely everything that people were getting censored for is now coming true. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's the yeah. most annoying part about it is that. Uh, <laughs> That's the gaslighting. That's the major gaslighting, right? Like, and I think I mentioned this last week how I'm sure it happens to you as well, but people who I haven't speak, spoken to in 10 years, let's say, um, or people I have spoken to six months ago and disagreed with me are now messaging me saying, oh, thank you for doing this. Thank you for talking about this. Nobody else will. I'm so sick of politicians on both sides. I'm so sick of uh, all these stupid rules that are inconsistent. And, and when you're talking about earlier about who is, is still believing in this stuff and who's still awake, I think it, it's still just like it's been since 2015, 2016. It's about making this tiny percentage of people, usually on Twitter, sound like the majority of people. Mm, all every, Hillary's got 99% of the support, you guys. Well, what do you mean? 99% of the people would agree with lockdowns. Mm, we should all follow Australia's model and, and crazy can I, stuff. Just real briefly, maybe this is a little off track, but we spoke to a guy today in the building who says he doesn't... Basically, the media tries to make it seem as though everybody believes the media, and that's another piece of the gaslighting, right? So we talked to this guy who says, you know, like, no, like, I, he's out and about, 
And when he talks to people, they know they kind of know the truth and they sort of know what's up. But let the media tell it. Everybody is on the side of, you know, anybody who doesn't wear a mask is crazy. Everybody loves Joe Biden. Everybody loved Hillary Clinton, but when you really get to the on the ground level and actually talk to people, you don't really find them. There's a you guys didn't go to a you guys didn't go to a Joe Biden truck rally. Come on, no. <laughs> I thought everybody in the U.S. did. We were looking for it, and you know, swing and a miss. I don't know what happened. Uh, she's a closet Biden supporter, actually. Well, I, <laughs> she puts on her Build Back Better hat. Well, and I don't know if people saw my video. I did do an amazing YouTube video where I went undercover in Joe Biden merch. And I tried to find Joe Biden supporters, and um, there really weren't any. I have seen that. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a break here, and we'll get to some some nice promotions. Uh, you guys can scratch your face like like I do on camera, which I shouldn't do. Um, and we'll get to one more thing. My show just launched um, with George Papadopoulos. Um, why isn't it showing up on the screen? We'll figure that out in a moment. Um <laughs> Who knows anymore? There we go. George Papadopoulos. I just did an episode with him two weeks ago. I delayed it because Ryan Hartwig was actually um, a guest of mine that I wanted to get out because of the new Facebook leaks that came out. But the funny thing about that is, is those Facebook leaks with Mark Zuckerberg say Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg, the big Zuck says that um, Facebook's working very closely with the Biden administration. George Papadopoulos actually predicts this in this episode I had with him. Um, he says it's very likely and that the Biden administration is working with Facebook already in, in its entirely it's in its entirety. And he gets into that in this episode. So go to rebelnewsplus.com and uh, it's only eight bucks a month. Um, I spend more than that on coffee in like three days. Hate you McDonald's. So go to that. Of course, Fog City Midge on Twitter. Uh, she has 700 trillion followers compared to me um, at Fog City Midge. And then we can try to qu quickly. Oh, we got her link tree here. How convenient, you guys. Um, find everything here. Where's your YouTube? That's what I wanted to go to. See if we can find that video. Um, I don't see it. You put out too much. For Biden. Undercover for Biden. There it is. I see for it. Biden. Third, row. Third row. Right. There it is. <laughs> So go watch that, you guys. Um, surely she found a ton of people. <laughs> and then report and opine uh, 5,700 now. You're climbing the ladder here. Um, you're way past me again. I'm the loser here, you guys. Stop me at any time. Correct me at any time, you guys. And then, um, okay, we're back. So the last thing we wanted to get to here was 1.7. Oh, there's your book. I just, still, um, you know, you know, I have to do it every single time. This book. this book is amazing. He plugs it for me every time. I appreciate it. Um, we're, we got a little bit behind schedule. We had to make some corrections, but we'll be back. And I'm going to plug it every single time until it is on every coffee table in the country. It's so good. This is New, this is new York in 2020. <laughs> I love that every time. Maybe I'll recreate the cover for you. Who knows? <laughs> 1.7 million counterfeit n95 mask you sent this one eric do you want to talk about this one um, um well, seized on funny. long island uh, on long island city yeah which is funny to me i actually used to work in long island city so it's mildly personal to me but doesn't this sort of okay when the lockdown first happened the first thing that i that i noticed in new york was the the sidewalk cleaning supply salespeople. And that sort of plays into this is like now they're saying we're too much. It almost I'll go full tinfoil hat here. It almost stinks as though some of these politicians are behind it. All of a sudden you have to Fauci says you have to wear two masks. Cuomo says you have to wear two masks and they're shipping in count millions of counterfeit masks into New York of all places. It's a little fishy. I don't want to go too deep down the rabbit hole. But I mean, in the same week that we're hearing you need to wear two masks. There's counterfeit masks showing up in Long Island City by the millions. Is, is something's wrong here? And perhaps it's me. I don't know. It's possible. Uh, I mean, <laughs> no, it's they they pull the same thing. Uh, we had tons of not counterfeit masks here, but defective masks. So instead of when there is this big thing between Trump and Canada about the three M masks, um, Canada said, "You know what?" Justin Trudeau said. Please, all of Canada, we love you. 
let's buy our masks from China. So we bought a shit ton of masks from China, more than likely from slave labor. They weren't able to disprove that. Nobody said that that's not the case. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that it is. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody, and maybe with a super chat. Um, so we bought all these masks from China, millions upon millions. Oh, I'm sorry. They're defective. Oh, it, it sucks. Send them back to China. China says, oh, we're not giving you your money back. Sorry. So we have this dependency on China for these masks. And Tucker Carlson touched on it a lot a few months ago about our dependency on China for medicine. And uh, they, they they just don't care. They say too bad. And we still go back to them. And, and we love it. Right. Canada's forever kissing their ass, even though they've got two of our people captured. Still, it's been two years. They've had two peep, two of our citizens captured. Um, but Justin Trudeau apologized the other day because somebody that works for um, the government wore a Wuhan t-shirt in the style of Wu-Tang Clan. I'll look that up for us. <laughs> but uh, official oh. national apology. <laughs> For Wu oh, was that, a mark, shirt, was that a Mark of the Beast t-shirt? Probably my Mark of the Beast on Insta. Sounds like something he might do. I don't know, but I'd like to sell the t-shirt myself. I'll but pull can I also for... just, just bring up really quickly that Governor Newsom and Governor Cuomo, both in the middle of this pandemic, had backdoor deals with China. So everything seems to be, I mean, we, we've, it's been, we've been completely sold, right? Like Newsom did his backdoor mask deal. Cuomo um, was saying that the virus didn't even come from China. It's a European virus. So this is all, I mean, uh, then of course, not, not to mention even what, what's going on with Swalwell. So it's all, it's all a little strange to me that, I mean, at least I'm actually surprised that the mainstream media is even willing to cover that. Like it, it's very strange. And it's also reminiscent of when we were crying, you know, the left wing media was crying. Oh, Trump's not doing enough, blah, blah. Operation Warp Speed comes out. And they get the vaccine out there. But then all of a sudden there's videos of women collapsing. I still want to know what happened to Tiffany, Do Tiffany Dover. I'm not letting that go. Um, <laughs> and, and so they, it was almost as though they were fear mongering the vaccine for a little bit because Trump was responsible for it. A month or two goes by and now they're doubling down, not only on the vaccine, but on two masks. So it, none of it's adding up, but perhaps I'm. I mean, I am a little bit crazy. I can admit that, but this is beyond. <laughs> this is beyond, man. I don't know what's going on. Here's the shirt. Canadian Foreign Ministry apologizes to China over Wu Tang Wuhan shirts. And it's a bat. Of course, it looks like it. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> notice that the first time. So get your last super chats in here, guys, and we'll try to close it up. Midge, you want to tell everybody why you moved? Do we want to tell them where you moved to? Well, I okay. So I not your address. I obviously, well, hey fans. Um, but yeah, so I have, I, I grew up in California. I've been in California my entire life. I love California, but their policies are just so horrible. They're driving people from the state. And given what's happening in our country right now, I'm actually sincerely afraid. I mean, especially what happened after the, the you know, the event at the Capitol, it seems like people, the conservatives are being targeted. And so I wanted to be in a free state. I wanted to be in a state where we're not perpetually in lockdown. Um, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area, they've been in and out of lockdown for months and months and months, and it looks like it's just never going to end. So I finally decided to pack up and I moved to Florida. Um, I drove 3,000 miles across the country, and actually Eric uh, flew out to come help me. Um, I lost my voice somewhere along the way, but uh, we made it to Florida. It's probably New Orleans. It's probably, it is. It's probably somewhere in New Orleans. Those people are crazy. But yeah, um, it, it was a great drive. Uh, it's a beautiful, massive country. If people have never driven across the country, it's really eye-opening. Um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm very grateful to be in Florida, to be in a free state. Ron DeSantis is the man. Uh, and yeah, so... I'm uh, I, I'm not Fog City Midge anymore. I guess I'm like Sun City Midge. Sun City Midge. But I'm really I don't really like the sun. I just moved to the Sunshine State, so I don't know what I'm yeah. gonna do. I was googling earlier, and as soon as you type type in Fog City, you come up. I was trying to find a Fig City. Maybe somebody, maybe somebody mistypes it sometimes for a Fig City. There's no Fig City. It doesn't exist. You guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> fig city. Maybe somewhere in France. I'll be Frog City now. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> that sounds racist to me. Um, 
race against the frogs. I'll, I'll, I'll do this without you guys on screen. How's that? So you don't get roped into it. You can't talk that way about the frogs. They've been infiltrating the government for 16 years now, taking us down from Iraq. It's been a long road, but the Patriots will survive. That's just awesome. to protect. I, I, I love it every single time. That's to protect Midge's image, so nobody screen, <laughs> screen records that. On a... All right. Any last words? Last words to Eric, as usual. Oh, nothing, man. Same, same old. I'm still plugging the book. Like I said, we had we got a little bit backed up, but it will be out. Um, and just really quick, um, it was a great drive. Uh, I saw some of the southern states. I'm happy to be here. I will be back in sub-zero temperatures of South Dakota soon. And, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Always a pleasure. That's good. Florida wins. Florida Vert wins. Amby <laughs> says. I've got one book to plug, as always. Like Mike Tyson. Awesome. All right, guys. Enjoy. Have a great um, night. And we will talk again soon. Good to see you. All right. Good to God see bless. you guys. Goodbye. How do we... Oh.